Heat lightning, sometimes known as silent lightning, summer lightning, or dry lightning mainly used in the American South, not to be confused with dry thunderstorms, which are also often called dry lightning, is a misnomer used for the faint flashes of lightning on the horizon or other clouds from distant thunderstorms that do not appear to have accompanying sounds of thunder. The actual phenomenon commonly called heat lightning is simply cloud-to-ground lightning that occurs very far away, with thunder that dissipates before it reaches the observer. At night, it is possible to see the flashes of lightning from very far distances, up to 100 miles 160 kilometers, but the sound does not carry that far. In Florida, this type of lightning is often seen over the water at night, the remnants of storms that formed during the day along a sea breeze front coming in from the opposite coast. Heat lightning is not to be confused with electrically induced luminosity actually generated at mesospheric altitudes above thunderstorm systems and likewise visible at exceedingly great ranges, a phenomenon known as sprites. topic cloud to ground lightning the movement of sound in the atmosphere depends on the properties of the air such as temperature and density because temperature and density change with height the sound of thunder is refracted through the troposphere this refraction results in spaces through which the thunder does not propagate the sound of thunder often reflects off the Earth's surface. The rumbling sound is partly due to these reflections. This reflection and refraction leaves voids where thunder cannot be heard. The Earth's curvature also contributes to distant observers not hearing the thunderclap. Thunder is more likely to be bounced off the Earth's surface before it reaches an observer far from the strike, and only the right refraction and reflection of the sound off of the atmosphere will give it range it needs to be heard far away. The reflection and refraction in the troposphere determines who hears the strike and who doesn't. Usually the troposphere will reflect the light, and leave out the sound, in these cases some fraction of the light emanating from distant thunderstorms whose distant clouds may be so low to the horizon as to be essentially invisible is scattered by the upper atmosphere and thus visible to remote observers. Under optimum conditions, the most intense thunderstorms can be seen at up to 100 miles 161 kilometers over flat terrain or water when the clouds are illuminated by large lightning discharges. However, an upper limit of 30 to 50 miles 48 to 80 kilometers is more common due to topography, trees on the horizon, low to mid-level clouds, and the fact that local visibilities are generally no more than 25 miles 40 kilometers. The height of the anvil the large, plume-like top of a thunderhead also contributes 45,000 feet 13,715 meters is very common in the mid-latitudes for warm season thunderstorms, but the anvil height can range from 35,000 feet 10,665 meters to a current record of 78,000 feet 23,770 meters. See also Dry lightning Upper atmospheric lightning <laughs>